Let's talk about averages. If someone makes an 85 and an 80 and a 20 on three tests, and we say, what is this person's test average? Well, we know to total those things and divide by the number of things there are, don't we? This would be a 61 and two-thirds, a 61 average, okay, and two-thirds. Does that look right? Now, we call this kind of average the mean, the mean, arithmetic mean. The word arithmetic is pronounced that way when it's a noun. It's pronounced arithmetic when it's an adjective. So the arithmetic mean of a bunch of numbers is the sum of those numbers divided by how many of those numbers there are. Now, there's a different kind of average, though. Uh, but before we look at that, let's look at how the mean can be skewed or knocked off this person had two grades that were 80 or above, didn't they? And they had one really bad grade. So if we say that an 90 is an A and 80 is a B and 70 is a C and 60 is a D, we say this person made two Bs, but now they have just barely a passing D average because of one bad test. We call this an outlier because it lies outside the normal range of the rest of these scores. In other words, one bad score, if you only have a few, can pull the mean way down. Conversely, if someone made two 20s and then made a 100, that one good score would pull the average way up, would pull the mean up. Let's look at another example that maybe is a little more... Uh, <laughs> fun to think about. Let's say there's a bus that has 10 people on the bus and we say their average salary of those 10 people on the bus is one million dollars. Now when most people say average we normally mean this kind of average, the mean. So if I said there's a bus coming down the street and there's 10 people on it and their average salary is a million dollars and they're going to walk out here in a minute and you have a chance to meet them, we would assume that all 10 of them are wealthy, wouldn't we? But with this kind of average, all it means is that their total salary divided by 10 is a million. In other words, their total salary is 10 million, and when you divide it by 10, it averages to a million. So we're assuming that everybody has about a million dollars, some a little higher, some a little lower. But we could have nine people who each make 10,000 a year. There's nine of those. That would count for 90,000, wouldn't it? And the rest of the 10 million could be made by one person. Does that make sense? That other person could make uh, this much a year. And when you add those together, you'd get 10 million. And when you divide it by 10, the average salary of those 10 people is a million dollars each. So the mean can be skewed by an outlier. If something is way higher than everything else or way lower than everything else, it can move that average quite a bit. So we have a different kind of average called the median. Where have you heard that word used in everyday life? In the middle of the road. That's exactly right. That thing between the two directions of a divided highway or down a boulevard is called the median and it literally means middle. Okay, Median means middle. When we find the median of a group of numbers, we first have to put them in order, either from highest to lowest or lowest to highest, doesn't matter. And we find the middle number. We find the middle number. So these test scores, we said the mean was a little under 62. 
But the median, if we put them in order and find the middle score, the median of these three test scores is 80, isn't it? Now, if I were that student, I'd certainly rather get the median for my average than the mean. And I can, I can understand it both ways. Some people look at that, some, some instructors would look at that and say, you know, I don't want one bad score to hurt this person, so I'll drop your lowest score. Or I'll take the median. Or I'll figure both of these and I'll give you the one that's higher. Other instructors would look at it and say, no, I think the mean represents this student because if someone were truly a B student, they would never make a 20 on a test. That's another way of looking at it. Okay? I'm not saying one's right and one's wrong. Uh, that was the opinion that most instructors had when I went to college. There was no such thing as dropping the lowest grade. There was no such thing as not taking the final. And every class had a cumulative final exam in it that was worth at least 30 and sometimes 50 percent of your semester grade. And I also had to walk uphill both ways to school through seven feet of snow, barefooted, because I didn't have any shoes. None of that is true, but the first part was true. Okay, so we have the median. Let's look at this bus example. If we put these in order, they're all 10,000 except for that biggest one. So the middle value is going to be 10,000, isn't it? That's a much more representative average of those 10 people on the bus than this million dollars is, isn't it? Because nine out of ten of those people make ten thousand dollars a year. So the median is always a better representation of the middle of a set of data than the mean is. Now, if numbers are distributed normally, then the mean and the median will be almost the same thing. In other words, if we had an 85 and an 80 and a 74, these two grades are distributed around the median very equally. This one's five above, this one's six below. So the median's going to be 80, the mean's going to be 79 point something. So when we have a normal distribution, the mean and the median will be close. But given the choice, if somebody says, which one of these represents the middle of the data or the average, median's always going to be better than the mean. Now, there are certain situations where you want the mean. Um, most of the time, when you look at statistics that the government puts out and says, what's the, what's the average income of a family of four? What's the average price of a 2,000 square foot home in the United States? they will always say the median salary, the median price of a home. And what they do is they, they don't literally write them down, but in a computer program it says here's all the prices of the homes, there's the middle one, that's the median. That's the median price. So, so your really high priced mansions don't affect your median and your really low value shacks don't affect your median because it's looking for the middle value. What if we don't have an odd number of values? Technically, there wasn't a middle number when there were 10, was there? We'd have five of these above the middle and five of them below, one of which was this guy. If you have an even number of numbers, let's say we had seven, six, five, and four, and we said, what's the mean? Add them and divide by four. What's the median? we would say here are the two numbers closest to the middle and the median is halfway between those two. So what we normally do is we would find the mean of those two numbers. We'd say what's the, what's the average, the mean of those two? We'd add them together, divide by two, and that'd be the number that's halfway between them. Okay. So when you have an odd number of values, there is a median. One of those values is the median. If you have an even number of values, you find the two that are above and below the middle and you take the mean of those, find the number that's halfway between. So that's mean and median.